All right, shalom, shalom. Um, continue on with Proverbs 6. It's been a while, but I'm trying to get this done as fast as I can. There's a lot of things we have going on. But uh, chapter 6 of Proverbs, we have uh, 35 verses. It's not too long. Uh, if you want to read along with me, I'll read, I'll read it out loud. And then if that's all what you want to uh, just to hear as you're driving or whatever you're doing, then that's fine. Uh, I'm trying to make the volume a little higher. So when I'm doing this, you can hear it from wherever you're at. And um, and then after I read this, then we'll go into a little study and look deeper into what's being said here by Proverbs. All right, chapter 6, verse 1 of Proverbs. My son, if you have put up security for your friend, if you have committed yourself on behalf of another, you have been snared by the words of your own mouth, caught by the words of your own mouth. Do this now, my son. And extricate yourself. Since you put yourself in your friend's power, go humble yourself and pester your friend. Give your eyes no sleep. Give your eyelids no rest. Break free like a gazelle from the hunter's trap, like a bird from the grip of the faller. Go to the ant, you lazy bones. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no chief, overseer, or ruler. Yet it provides its food in the summer. <clears throat> And gathers its supply at harvest time. Lazy bones, how long will thou lie there in bed? When will you get up from your sleep? I'll just lie here a bit and rest a little longer. Just fold my hands for a little more sleep. And poverty comes marching in on you. Scarcity hits you like an invading soldier. A scoundrel, a vicious man, lives by crooked speech. Winking his eye, shuffling his feet. Pointing with his finger, with deceit in his heart, he is always plotting evil and sowing discord. Therefore, disaster suddenly overcomes him. Unexpectedly, he is broken beyond repair. There are six things yod heh -Wah -Heh hates, seven which he detests. A haughty look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes. Feet swift in running to do evil, a false witness who lies with every breath, and him who sows strife among his brethren, his brethren. My son, obey your father's command, and don't abandon your mother's teachings. Bind them always on your heart, tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you, and when you wake up, they will talk with you. For the mitzvah is a lamp, and the Torah is a light, and reproof that discipline are the ways of life, to keep you from an evil woman, from a loose woman's seductive tongue. Don't let your heart lust after her beauty, or allow her glance to captivate you. The price of a whore is a loaf of bread, but the adulteress is hunting for a precious life. Can a man carry fire inside his shirt without burning his clothes? Can a man walk barefoot on hot coals without scorching his feet? So is he who has sex with his neighbor's wife. Anyone touching her will be punished. A thief is not despised if he steals, only satisfies his appetite when hungry. But when he is caught, he must pay back sevenfold. He may have to give up all his wealth that he owes, that he owns. He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. He will get nothing but blows and contempt. And his disgrace will not be wiped away. For jealousy drives a man into a rage. He will not show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept compensation. He'll refuse every bribe, no matter how large. Man, what a warning. All right, so that's Proverbs chapter 6. Like I said, it's not that long. You know, you can, you can read one chapter of Proverbs very fast. Okay, so let's go to um, chapter 6. And we're going to use two different versions of, of, maybe even three different versions of the Bible to look at the um, some of the things that are written here. Because some um, some scriptures give better insight into what's being said here more clarity 
So in Proverbs 6, uh, we can break it down from uh, verse 1 through 5, uh, 6 through 11, 16 through 9, and then 20 through 35. And you'll see the differences. You know, the number 1 through 5 talks about money. Uh, 6 through 11 talks about um, the, the, the ant and not being lazy. Uh, 16 and uh, through 19 uh, talks about the things that the, the father hates and uh, warns us about certain things. And then when we get to 20 through 35, it, it talks about uh, not abandoning the teachings and, 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 the, and the warnings about the evil woman. Now, uh, this is not just for men being warned of evil women. This is a spirit that we're talking about that tries to seduce people. So it can be found in women and men. So women be careful and be wise of deceitful men as well that are trying to use their flattery of their words um, to entice you and to do things that you ought not do. Okay, so let me just get a little bit coffee here. All right. So, uh, Chapter 6, verse 1 through 5, uh, it, says, it lists various traps to which the foolish and the wicked are prone. Solomon warns to avoid them at all costs. So um, there's a word here that says, Do not offer up your property as collateral for your neighbor's debt. And we'll get into that a little bit, a little bit right here. So this where I read, it says, My son, if you have put security up for your friend, uh, that's the version I read, but let's see what King James says. And King James says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger. Okay, so let's look at that word surety. So the word surety um, is a, a pleading or a stand good for anyone's, anyone tends to uh, relieve him of the responsibility responsibility he should fill and seldom leaves a co-signer as much um, responsible by the one who helps before so what's going on is uh, it's like uh, someone co-signing for um, a loan ho oh excuse me all right sorry about that I have these automatic lights in here I guess I wasn't moving around enough to keep it keep the lights on but anyway um, does this this word uh, surety ship or surety it's, it's that co-signing for somebody, like if you're buying a car, taking a, a big loan out. Now, we, we, the Bible is not saying not to help people. The Bible is saying to be really careful who you co-sign for because it's, it's your name and you're, you will be held responsible uh, for whatever debt that person has acquired. And a lot of times what the Bible is saying is these people do not um, feel the full pressure or... Um, the burden of the debt that they have acquired because they see that you're responsible for it if anything happens. So you take the responsibility away from them that they need to have sometimes, especially for young people, to learn uh, how to be responsible for their money. Uh, so what um, it says, the surety is a, is a sign of, as a lack of understanding. So when you do something like that, when you put yourself, your, your name up for someone else, it's a lack of understanding that you shouldn't have. Um, so I have a couple of notes here. It says, shaking hands when the mouth made a promise was considered the ratification of a contract or a promise. And thus a man becomes ensnared with the words of his mouth, as it says in Job 17.3. So when you're shaking hands and you're speaking this thing, you're you're making a, 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 like a contract of a promise. And uh, that's what it shows that you, you're, you're ensnared with the words of your mouth. Uh, if you do, if you did co-sign or place yourself in in surety for someone, press this person to pay his debt, or you will be left to pay it. Um, and I've seen this happen and happen over over and over again. Different people in, um, that I've been around and things that I've seen they say, "Oh man, I did this, I did this." And for, and for people, they barely they didn't know that well. It wasn't like it was their son or their daughter. Uh, it was people that they they didn't know well enough to put themselves out in, in that way or in that manner. To co-sign means you're signing your name, who you are, uh, as a collateral for whatever debt that they're they're making. You know, and sometimes we just have to say no. And that's what the Bible is trying to teach us here. And not to be mean and cruel, but you have to make sure you're taking care of your family and your children. You know, 
your wife, you, your wife, or your wife, and, and or the, you wives and your husband and your and your children. You got to make sure you're not putting them in any harm's way. Because what happens if they do default and now they're coming for you and now you got to lean against you or you got to pay the bill and then you don't have money for groceries or your, your car payment or your home. You don't want to be in that kind of situation. You know, life is hard enough. Paying bills is, is, is enough. You have enough bills of your own to pay than trying to take on someone else's as well. So be very careful and be wise um, when you're dealing with money and other people. Okay. Like I said, not to be cruel. But to, um, or not to help people, but find uh, a different way. Maybe show them how to save a little bit more or how to build their credit. You know, there's ways to do that. And that's for another subject, another time. And I have other postings that I'll, I'll have in a different channel that talk about that. So um, just be wise. Okay, so chapter 6 through 11. Um, avoid laziness. You know, the father hates the lazy. Um, he had, the Bible actually says that, that he hates the slothful. Okay, slothful means lazy. Okay, so there's, um, he talks about um, about the ant. He says, go and look at the ant. Okay, so there's 15 attributes of the ant that, that the ant holds. It says, uh, comparison between human behavior of the characteristics of plants and animals and insects is used throughout the Bible. Here we have 15 attributes of the ant that uh, we're told to consider. It's ways and to gain wisdom. So we can gain wisdom by looking at the ant. We can gain wisdom by looking at other things like uh, what I just stated here or I just read from my notes. Uh, you can look at the trees. You can look at the eagles. You can look at the doves. You can look at the lions. There's a lot to learn from nature uh, and what they do. Because one thing about nature, uh, natural things, animals and plants, stuff, they never go against their own nature. Only humans are stupid enough to go against the, um, the way we're supposed to act. Okay, the way we're supposed to do things and how we're supposed to treat others. So when we talk about the ant, the ant has 15 attributes. Uh, one means they're hardworking. They're the hardest working of all insects. Very interesting. Very hardworking. Um, they're, mo they're most industrial. They build all kinds of um, homes and stuff underground. They dig out and they make all these things um, for, the, for the, the betterment of the whole community. Uh, they collect food in the prosperous season, as the, as the scriptures we just read uh, state. It goes in the harvest and it gathers the food, so they have food throughout the win through the winter winter time, so that they don't starve. And uh, sometimes when we go through uh, winter time, we go through things. We need to start saving things inside of us, get enough of the word of Elohim to put inside of us that we have to take with us um, when the times get hard. You know. We gather during the, during, the, during the harvest. When times are good, like you, everything's working out. You're finally making the little bit of money you need to make. The bills are getting paid. Everybody's healthy. You're, you have a home. You have a decent car. Things are good. Don't stop praising them. Don't stop worshiping them. Don't stop studying. That's the time to really dig in. That's the time to really start praying. That's the time to really start learning and, 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 and gleaning off others. And pouring as much seed inside of you that you can. And that way you have something to, to eat off of later on. Put as much food inside of you as you can, and you have enough when if times do get hard, times do get bad, you can go back. And my faith is built and, and, and has been made strong by those things that my father has blessed me with. All right, so um, number four, they're fond, fondly at, uh, attached to the young. They love the young children. They do everything they can to protect the young. Um, they have a keen foresight for others. They're always thinking about each other, not just about themselves. And this, these are the ants. It's really interesting. They work quietly without show. I mean, how many people out there, they do something, they want, oh, look what I've done, everybody. They want all the accolades, and oh, look at me, look at me. You know, sometimes it's better do your job because it's what needs to be done. Just get it done. Uh, without anybody, you know, making a big scene. Oh, look how much I'm giving. Mm, yeah, there's that too. Okay. Um... They work hard until the work is done. They never leave something for tomorrow. They just get it done. Okay. They work together in a system of organization that is for the best good of the whole community. They, they don't work together without fighting and bickering. They work organized in an organized manner for the betterment of the community. Man, if we can do that, man, we would have some powerful families. If you had just individual families, if they can stop fighting with each other, and just work together. They can help each other build um, great commerce. They can build, build um, 
I mean, I've seen families where they, they buy a house and that's given to one and then they all contribute to buy another house for another one until each family member has their own home. Now, we can get to that point, man, how prosperous can our families be, okay? Um, it's just some trust matters, though, and that's where all this word, if we pour it into our children, maybe they'll be have enough inside of them to trust one another. They can help each other out and grow strong together in that kind of community. Community. All right. Um, the great carpenters and masons, you know, like I said, they build their own homes on the ground. They have all kinds of different corridors and patterns and, and, and all kinds of stuff. It's really neat. You got to look at it one time. Go and, and, uh, and, and, and study the ants. It's really interesting. They keep their homes carefully and thoroughly clean. They're, they don't leave anything a mess. They pick up all the crumbs. Everything's put where it needs to be. Everything's always clean. Um, they all have a definite job to help and meet the needs of the community. The definite job. Something about definiteness is very important. When you have a definite job, you know exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it and what you're supposed to do. Um, then you have a plan to get it done. You definitely will get get it done because it's a definite job. Uh, d d definite plan, a definite job, you know. It says they will fight to the death to protect their own homes and the young, um, and keep the young safe from the enemies. So they will put their, their their own lives at stake to protect their homes, to protect the young. Very interesting. There's a lot of humans that would do such a thing also, but the you know sad to say there's a few that they'll throw their children out there. And uh, do horrible things. They'll throw their wives and their children out there. They'll strap bombs to them. You know, it's very, very, very sad. Sad. Uh, sad that 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 it, that it actually happens in our world even today. Okay. Um, they have a human-like social life. A human-like social life. They 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 can see them. They actually are dealing with one another. Really interesting. They are wise and intelligent. Um, without a guide or a king to carry out the life's work, um, they get everything done. They don't have to have a leader telling them what to do. They already know what they got to do, and they go and do it. I mean, how, how many people do you know that they work hard when the boss is around, but the, when the boss is gone, they do whatever they want. They're on their phone, you know, they're on whatever, doing things they shouldn't be doing. Same thing with children, you know, oh, they'll, they'll do their chores and clean and, and do everything as long as the parents are watching them and telling them, making sure they're doing it. But will they do it if they're left on their own? The Bible says they're, that they won't, not to leave them, their minds idle and not to leave them alone, you know, to be there with them, coach them, teach them, you know, train them up in the ways of, of, of the word of Elohim. And, um, and they'll grow strong. Okay. So just with that, that's just a look at the ant. Okay, so as we go on, it says laziness will lead to poverty. Absolutely. If you don't get out and work, you know, I've, I've heard uh, people, you know, there, some of them are um, so-called entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs. And they say, oh, uh, I just can't stay out of work. I get fired and this and that because, you know, I got my own thoughts and my own ways and I got my own dreams and my own desires. You know, and that's good. You can have a dream. You can have a desire. You can have, you want to be an entrepreneur and do, do your own business and do this. But, you know, it takes money. So, you, you know, you sometimes you got to pay the price, get that nine to five job, whatever it is, get it, put the money away. So now you have money put away, you have the credit, you built yourself up enough. So now you have enough to invest into that dream and to invest into that business that you want to strive for. You got to have something backing it up. But people don't want to do the work. They're too busy. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And they'll give their freedoms away to give it, get a handout. You know, no one's entitled to anything. And entitlement breeds lazy people. And anybody who thinks, oh, I'm entitled to this, I'm entitled, you're not entitled to nothing. Go out and earn it. The Bible's telling us to get up and go to work. Um, laziness will lead, will lead to poverty. Every extra hour, day, week, month, year that goes by, it's a closer step to poverty. So you say, oh, I'm just going to lay here just for an hour. And then it turns into a couple hours. And then, oh, the whole day's gone and you can't get nothing done. And then a days lead into two weeks and weeks lead into months and months lead into years. And at the end of the year, what did you get done? What did you learn? How much did you save? How much did you accomplish? How closer are you to that dream of yours? You know, and you know, you needed to make a, a dream into a distinctive dream, make it into a goal. 
and uh, pay, write out exactly how, what it's going to take to get there and then pay the price. All right. So uh, now we get to um, verse 16 through 19. It says seven things yod heh hates. Haughtiness, lying, um, murdering, plotting, evil, eagerness to uh, do wrong, a false witness, and sowing discord among brothers. And that's a big one right there. You know, there's a lot of people that they want to complain and bring strife in and challenge everybody and, and wants everybody to be judged and bring all kinds of just mess. Just a mess in there and they break up relationships and people don't get along and they can't hang around and they don't trust each other. And it's a horrible place to be and it's a horrible person to be. Um, we got to really, really be careful, you know, of how we're acting. The father says that he hates these things. You know, sowing discord among brothers. You remember I was uh, talking about the seed. When you plant the wrong seed in, in somebody, you'll be held accountable for it. You know, a false witness, you know, you know what you said, you know, you, don't lie. Don't lie on behalf of others. If you, if you witness something, be honest about what you witnessed. Uh, eagerness to do wrong, we should be eager to do what's righteous, what's right. Plotting evil, we should be plotting good. You know, murdering, no, we should be trying to save life. Um, and haughtiness, we should always be humble. Because there's always someone out there that, that knows more, especially our Father. And the, the Bible's in, inexhaustible. There's so much to learn in there. And there's so many people out there that have lived a life longer than ours that we can learn from, that we can glean off of if we're humble enough to just be quiet, open our ears, and listen intently with the, with the intent to learn. Not to ask questions, not to bicker, not to fight, not to challenge, but to actually listen to learn. Listening is something that we must be studied. You know, the Bible says to study to be quiet. And sometimes we need to be quiet so we can learn. Okay, and sometimes being quiet is not just being quiet with your mouth, but set your mind at still and let it focus on what's being taught. Get off your phone and listen to what's going on. Okay. Um, so 2035, the per uh, the atrocities or the mayhem or the, uh, oh man, of adultery or the dreadful consequences of adultery. There's so many things you can suffer the husbands for for young men if you if you're out there doing things you shouldn't be doing with another man's wife uh, that man may come and take your life you know you can be strong and, and know how to fight as much as you want but you can't stop a bullet okay there goes the lights again but you can't like i was saying you can't stop a group of men coming um at you so compared to a thief uh, it, it destroys himself. It, you will get wounded. You have dishonor. You have disgrace, and you will not be trusted. You know all these things that um, that come from uh, being an, adult uh, an adulterer, and that goes for women and men. You know, we need to learn how to control our emotions. We need to control um, the sexual desire, and there's a lot of power. And uh, if you understand how to control your sexual desire, especially for, for men, young men, and any any man, really. If you can get that that um, the energy that you have there and control it and use it for other things, whether it's in your sports, in your business, in your studies, uh, whatever business you want to build, whatever you're at, you can use that energy towards that and focus that energy towards that instead of going out there and doing things you shouldn't do and maybe get yourself in trouble, um, by doing something with the wrong person uh, or doing something, you know, catching a disease, you know, just bringing a lot of strife to your life and, and um, bringing children into the world that, you know, maybe you're not ready to take care of, but, you know, now it's their responsibility and you need to take care of them, love them, and do the best you can for them because, you know, we did, we did the act, you know, whatever we do in this body, we, we need to take care of here on this earth and be responsible for it and own up to it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of fathers and mothers out there. They didn't plan on having children. They, a lot of them learned how to become really good mothers and really good fathers. And, and it's uh, good to see. And then there's some that are uh, it's just the complete opposite of that. And that's a shame. And then there are some that are wise enough that they know they can't um, take care of that child. So they give them up to for adoption. And they look for a good couple that they know that, that my child's going to be better off with them than they are with me. And that's actually a big, big... Uh, Man, that's a lot of love. That's a lot of love. So if you're a person who's been adopted and, and your, your mother gave you, up, gave you up for adoption because she was in a, in a situation 
where she knew you would grow up wrong and, and wouldn't be healthy and have just a horrible life. And you grew up with the beautiful family that cared about you and loved you and, and took care of you. You should, you know, be, be, um, have gratitude for that, you know. And not saying that, you know, you don't want to know who your real mother was and all that. But if you ever do find out, you know, maybe um, not everyone, but some of you should say thank you. You know, you gave me a chance to be somebody, somebody great and a chance to learn, grow and be healthy and live a prosperous life. So, you know, the book, the book of Proverbs is beautiful. We'll get to chapter seven soon. Um, that's my, um, my, my outtake on chapter six. There's more in there. Go and dig it out for yourself. It's beautiful, the book of Proverbs. And like I said, just, you know, every day you can just read one chapter. Uh, even if you do it, you know, once a week, however you want to do it. Get through the book of Tra uh, 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 Proverbs, just reading one chapter at a time and glean from the great and beautiful wisdom and knowledge that's been poured out here and given to the children of Elohim. All right, with that, uh, shalom, shalom. Uh, bless you all. I wish you all have a good day, a blessed day. Stay great because you are great and stay blessed because you are blessed. Shalom, shalom.